Let's dive into seven performance hacks that'll not only boost your code, but also really make you look like a Python pro. Tip number one, use slots to save memory and speed things up. Python classes use dictionaries to store instance attributes. Super flexible, but also super greedy when it comes to memory. Consider this class. Let's measure how much memory one instance uses. In this case, it's a chunky 520 bytes. Why so much? Because Python creates a dictionary for every object, letting you add attributes dynamically. It's great for flexibility, but bad for memory. Inner slots. This little tweak swaps out the bloated dictionary and adds a leaner data structure. Same class, same functionality, but now it only uses 120 bytes per instance. That's a memory cut of nearly 80%. And if you're managing thousands of objects, your RAM will thank you. Attribute access is faster too. Less RAM, more speed. What could be better? Tip number two, replace loops with list comprehensions. Let's talk loops. Sure, a good old fashioned for loop works just fine, but it's not exactly speedy. Here in our code is a classic example. Creating a list of squares with a loop. It's okay, but all that manual appending adds unnecessary overhead. Running our timer will set a baseline for performance. Now let's rewrite it with a list comprehension. It's just over one line, super clean, and Python optimizes it under the hood, making the code run faster. Comparing the result to our traditional loop in our side-by-side, -side, list comprehension smokes the loop in performance. It's one of those why wasn't I doing this all along moments. Tip number three, cache results with LRU cache. Ever written a function that repeats the same calculations over and over? Painful, right? Take our example code. It's a basic recursive Fibonacci function. Writing the code, we see it works just fine, but as the input grows, so does the waiting time, exponentially. In our LRU cache, we'll add this decorator to our improved version of the function, and like magic, it remembers previous results. No more redundant calculations. Let's run both versions of the code and look at that. The LRU cache version finishes in a split second. With caching, you're shaving off precious seconds or even minutes of execution time. Use this for any function that gets called repeatedly with the same inputs, and your code will feel like it had an espresso shot. Tip number four, use generators for big data. Let's say you're working with a massive data set. We can simulate that here with our list. Python lists are great until they're not especially when the program crashes because you run out of RAM. Instead of creating a giant list, a generator produces one item at a time. It's memory efficient and perfect for handling large streams of data. Running both versions of the code, we get the same output, regardless of the technique we use. Let's see how much memory they consume with a new list and generator. In a side-by-side -side memory test, the generator barely makes a dent, while the list hogs all the resources. Tip number five, go fast with NumPy. When it comes to heavy math or massive data sets, Python's built-in tools just don't cut it. Try handling large numerical arrays with regular lists and you'll see what I mean. In our before example, we square a list of numbers and retrieve the first 10 items. Let's run it to establish a baseline time. Not bad, but we can do better. Now let's switch to NumPy and square every element. Running the two versions of the code, we can see that NumPy is more than 15 times faster than the original code. If you're into data science, machine learning, or anything number heavy, this is your new best friend. Tip number six, ditch global variables. Global variables seem convenient until they're not. They're a debugging nightmare, and on top of that, they're slower to access because Python has to dig through the global namespace to find them. In our timing example, it takes a quarter of a second to find our variable 10,000 times. Let's rewrite that code with the local variable instead. In a quick performance test, the local version consistently beats the global one, cutting the time almost in half. Bottom line, save time, shop local. Tip number seven, embrace built-in functions. Python's built-in functions like sum, map, and filter aren't just there for show. They're written in C, so they're faster than anything you could whip up in Python. Take summing up numbers. You could write a custom function like we have here, but why? Python sum does the same thing in less time and with much less effort. Running the two examples side by side, we see the built-in function takes less than half the time to run as the custom code. Built-ins are faster, simpler, and way more readable. So next time, skip the DIY and use what Python gives you. Want to take your Python skills even further? 
Learn how to turn your Python scripts into standalone executables, no interpreter needed. Click here to check out my step-by-step -step guide and start sharing your Python programs like a pro. See you there.